Welcome to Comics in the Attic, where I bring you tales from my collection of back issues. I'm King Cheerio, your humble narrator here to deliver these stories through funny voices and visuals from the books themselves. All artwork has been altered to protect copyright and preserve the integrity of the original works. Now I give to you Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Volume 1, Issue 1, by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, originally published by Mirage Comics. Let's begin. My name is Leonardo. We made a wrong turn somewhere. Now we're caught. Our backs to the wall in this trash-strewn alley. Barring the way out are 15 members of the Purple Dragons, the toughest street gang on the east side. The only way they'll let us out of here is if we're dead. The lead dragon shouts, You're dead, freaks! Nobody trespasses on Purple Dragon Turf and gets away with it, especially when they're wearing stupid costumes. <laughs> He's wrong. We're not wearing costumes. The turtles lunge to attack and the dragons scatter. Leo acknowledges that while young, these dragons had seen a lot and weren't easily startled. They fought and beat everything on two legs in this area, except us. Leonardo strikes from the air, cutting through two opponents on the way down. Donatello takes out a third with his staff. Seeing that hand-to-hand -hand was ineffective, several dragons break into smaller groups and open up with artillery. Raphael loves this stuff. There's a flash as his sighs come out. The three toughs don't even see that. Too bad. Raphael takes them all out with ease. Donatello and Michelangelo take out four more of the dragons as one of the remaining punks starts to panic. Who are these guys? Don't know. Some kind of freaks. But even freaks can bleed. Cut them! Leonardo thinks to himself, yes, we can bleed. And so can you. With a flash, Leonardo slashes through the last two thugs, and with that, the battle is finished. As police sirens wail in the distance, signaling the arrival of law enforcement, the four turtles disappear down a sewer grate, with Leonardo lamenting about running away from those he could consider allies. However, he thinks, we are ninja. We strike hard and fade away into the night. The storm drains are our home. We know every inch of these subterranean passages. For all our years, we have dwelt in these dark depths, learning, growing, and building. The turtles enter their lair and are immediately greeted by their master, the Rat Splinter. Ah, my sons, you have returned at last. You have fought? Michelangelo responds, And won, Master Splinter, against fifteen foes, he says excitedly. Ah, you have done well. Your skills are at their peak. Splinter beckons the turtles to sit and listen. I have foreseen this night for many years. Now it is time. Time for you to be told of the mission for which I have trained you these past thirteen years. You will learn of my life and how you came to be. Splinter goes on to tell them how twenty years past he was the pet of a man named Hamato Yoshi. Being kept in the man's dojo, Splinter observed the man practice his mastery of the martial arts and even began to mimic the man's moves. Yoshi, of course, found this amusing, but could not have guessed the rat was not simply copying his owner. In truth, Splinter was learning from his master. The young rat could not have had a better teacher, as Yoshi was said to be the greatest shadow warrior of his clan. He was one of the famous Foot Clan, the most feared warriors and assassins in all Japan. Another member of the Foot Clan was Oroku Nagi. He and my master Yoshi competed fiercely in all things, especially for the love of a young woman, Tang Shen. Both tried to win her, but from the start she loved only one, my master Yoshi. Splinter goes on to tell the turtles how one night, in a fit of jealousy, Nagi invaded the home of Tang Shen and demanded that Shen love him. Shen refused, proclaiming that her heart belonged only to Yoshi. In this moment, Nagi's jealousy broke into rage as he began to beat Shen blindly. At this time, Yoshi arrived, intending to visit the woman he loves, only to see Nagi holding up her beaten body, readying a finishing strike as he notices Yoshi. Shen! Oh gods, no! Ha! Yoshi dog! If I can't have this wench, then no one will! Nagi says, ready to kill Tang Shen. The rage of seeing his greatest rival about to end his lover's life turned Yoshi's world into a red haze. Yoshi wouldn't recall what happened next. Just that when it cleared, Tang Shen was alive, and Oroku Nagi was no more. Unfortunately, by killing Nagi, another member of his clan, Yoshi had dishonored himself. He was left with two choices, take his own life or flee the country with Shen. Yoshi chose to live with Shen, taking her and Splinter with him to New York, where he started a small martial arts school. However, 
Back in Japan, Nagi's family were grieving his death. Nagi's brother, the seven-year-old Oroku Saki, took it especially hard, vowing vengeance upon Hamato Yoshi. Saki began intensive training in the ninja's art, quickly surpassing all of his teachers, growing older and stronger, all while his hatred of Hamato Yoshi grew deep and bitter. At the age of 18, Saki was called to sit before the masters of the Foot Clan. Oroku Saki, you have proven yourself. Though quite young, you are our most cunning assassin and an able leader. Therefore, we have chosen you to go to the U.S. and head the New York branch of the Foot. Saki hid his excitement and malicious intent well, thinking to himself that he was finally within striking distance of his brother's killer. It only took Saki a year to turn the New York foot into a cornerstone of the criminal underworld, involving the clan in drug smuggling, arms running, and of course their specialty, assassination. It was around this time that Saki had begun to call himself the Shredder. He was feared, he was unstoppable, but he was far from satisfied. His blood still burned for vengeance against both Yoshi and his wife, Tang Shen. They would soon pay for his brother's death. So, on a night fifteen years ago, Oroku Saki had finally tracked Yoshi to his home. He was finally ready to make his move. For the murderer of my brother, there will be no escape. Saki thought, crouched on a rooftop, peering into Yoshi's apartment. Yoshi was not home. Tang Shen, however, was. Clad in the armor of the Shredder, Saki silently made his move. My master came home that evening, never expecting that his most dangerous enemy was lying in wait. Entering the apartment, his gaze fell on the still, silent form of his beloved Shen. Then he saw her killer, Splinter said solemnly. Good Lord, who are you? Yoshi stutters out. I am Oroku Saki. Oh, no, Yoshi blurts out, realizing in that instance that he would never be able to escape his former clan. Yoshi doesn't even get the chance to defend himself as the Shredder silences him forever. Splinter continues, In the struggle, my cage was smashed. I was free, but my master was dead. In my grief, I wandered the streets, living off scraps of garbage. Then one day, while I was searching a trash can for my next meal, I witnessed an accident. An old blind man crossing the street was almost run down by a large truck. At the last moment, a young man leapt at the blind man and knocked him out of the truck's way. As the truck screeched to a jarring stop, a metal canister bounced out of the back of the truck and struck the young man near his eyes. Unnoticed by the crowd, the small canister bounced several more times, smashing a glass jar that contained four baby turtles. You four, as infants. Splinter goes on, explaining that the four turtles and the mysterious canister fell into an open manhole. The turtles saved from injury by landing on piles of leaves and papers. The canister, however, had smashed open, covering the four in a strange, glowing ooze. Splinter notes that although the reasoning escaped him, he felt compelled to follow the baby turtles into the sewer and gather them up into a coffee can. The following morning, Splinter awoke to discover the four turtles had doubled in size and escaped the confines of the coffee can. But that was not all. Splinter, too, had grown larger and more intelligent. Over the span of a year, the turtles and Splinter continued to evolve and grow, the turtles growing at an even faster pace than Splinter, eventually reaching a relatively human size. The four turtles followed Splinter everywhere except the surface. The rat had grown smart enough to know that their existence was best kept secret. I was amazed at how intelligent you seemed, but even so I was not ready for what happened one day. Splinter? One of you actually said my name. This was just the start, however, as before long all four turtles began to speak. And even more astonishingly, the turtles began to stand and walk upright. They began to copy Splinter's movements, and Splinter, recalling his time in Master Yoshi's dojo, began to train the four brothers in Master Yoshi's fighting techniques. I taught you the use of weapons, the art of stealth, and all that I knew of this world. In time you surpassed my lessons and became true ninja. Using a battered copy of a book on Renaissance art that I had fished out of the storm drain, I chose names for each of you. Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello and Raphael. Now I am old, and there is a task that I would have you perform before I leave this life. 
Now I must ask you to do that which no being should ask of another. I ask you to avenge the cruel death of my master Hamato Yoshi and his wife Tang Shen. I ask you to challenge and kill the murderer Oroku Saki, the Shredder. A night passes, and we turn our attention to a rooftop with a lone turtle perched high above the streets. Ah, the night air. I love it. I despise the damp, dank underground. My brothers don't seem to mind it, but this is where I belong. Such a feeling of freedom, so much room to move about. I am Raphael, Ninja Turtle, and my master Splinter chose me for this task, to deliver a message of challenge to the Shredder. Raphael leaps from the rooftop, quickly closing the distance to the foot compound. Splinter told me to infiltrate Shredder's headquarters and leave a calling card. My pleasure. As Raphael scales the fence into the compound, he spies two guards to his right and a third to his left, deciding right then that his calling card would be the beaten bodies of the guards. Raphael springs into action, deliberately revealing himself to the guards. Intruder! Stop him! The guards react, brandishing their weapons. Raphael isn't even phased. In fact, facing armed opponents seems to excite him even more. Hey! Raphael slashes into the two guards, and they crumple to the ground. By this time, the third guard has noticed Raphael's actions, and instead of triggering the alarm, has decided to face down the intruder on his own. Who are you, ninja? The guard asks as he charges toward Raphael. Turtle, is Raphael's reply, ready to meet this next challenge. The two clash in the air, and when they next touch the ground, only Raphael is standing. Splinter had given Raphael a note. He'd wrapped it around his side. In the building the guards were patrolling, he could see the silhouette of Oroku Saki in a window. Easy shot. Raphael throws the sigh, interrupting the shredder as he was negotiating a contract to provide security for a couple businessmen. Yeah! Saki cries as he deflects the sigh into a wall. Good lord, what is that? exclaims one of the businessmen, completely startled. Seeing the note, Saki grabs it from the wall. The note reads as follows. Oroku Saki, also known as the Shredder. You have dishonored the name of your family by murdering Hamato Yoshi. I give you the chance to regain your honor. Meet my four disciples for a duel to the death tomorrow night at the following address. The businessman, rather annoyed with being ignored by Saki and unimpressed with his sales pitch and lack of security in his own complex, leave believing their time has been wasted. Saki isn't concerned by that. Instead, he tries to identify who the note could have come from, to no avail. It doesn't really matter, though. The Shredder had earned his reputation, and he would answer this challenge with blood. The following night, the four brothers gather at the designated site of their showdown with Shredder. On the rooftop, and feeling like there's eyes on them, Leonardo shouts out, Shredder! We are here! There is no response, so Leo shouts again, Shredder! Face us! Who are these fools? Shredder asks himself from an adjacent rooftop. I still do not quite understand why, after so long, this comes back to haunt me. I killed Yoshi fifteen years ago. No matter. My men are in place and the time is near. I shall finish this business once and for all. Shredder thinks as he leaps to the rooftop the turtles are on. Shredder, do you fear us? The turtles shout. The Shredder lands on the rooftop, finally answering the turtles challenge. I am here. Come, face your doom. Foot, join me! An entire squad of foot ninja emerge from the shadows. If the turtles wished to fight Oroku Saki outright, they would need to prove their worth by defeating every foot member on the rooftop. The challenge is accepted and the gauntlet is thrown. The foot ninja proved to be highly skilled opponents, much more skilled than the street punks the turtles had taken down previously. However, as good as the Shredder's ninja were, the turtles were better. Your ninja have fallen, Shredder! Leonardo says, blood dripping from his katana. So I see. They were good men. My best, Shredder says nonchalantly. I see, too, that they have left their mark, he says, referring to the many bleeding cuts the turtles received from the foot ninja's weapons. But that was just students fighting students. Now you must face a teacher. A master. Come, one at a time or all at once. I don't care. For only I will leave here alive. Me first, Raphael pounces. However, the Shredder effortlessly bats him aside, slashing into his abdomen in the process. Donatello is next to try. The Shredder easily breaks through his guard, the turtle shell saving him from a fatal blow. 
Ha! You left yourself wide open! You are much too slow! The Shredder kicks the turtle away. Michelangelo attempts to tackle and Shredder simply tosses him aside. Amateurs! Shredder admonishes his foes, clearly unimpressed with the level of skill on display. Shredder spots Leonardo, the only turtle to not engage in the fray so far, and begins to charge at him. Come, Gaijin! Your brothers have fallen! You are next! Leonardo charges, and the two leap at each other, colliding in midair. When Shredder lands on the ground, it's revealed that Leonardo managed to slash Shredder's chest. The turtles had finally drawn blood. There was no time for celebration, however, as Leonardo had also taken damage from the mid-air clash. He is too skilled for us to fight one-on-one, -on -one, brothers. Use group tactics and hit from a distance. Michelangelo and Donatello begin lobbing shuriken, and Shredder finds himself unable to deflect them all. He takes one in the abdomen and one in the chest, but he's far from down yet. Raphael throws his size at Shredder, but Shredder leaps away and is then caught by a surprise kick to the abdomen by Leonardo. Furious at being caught off guard, Shredder leaves himself vulnerable to an open palm strike to the chin. The turtles don't let up the offensive as Donatello strikes the Shredder from behind with his bow staff, then lines up a swing that destroys the Shredder's mask and helmet. crack a ha this is the end for you, Shredder! Ah! Donatello chokes as Shredder recovers his bearings, delivering a powerful kick that silences the turtle. You are overly confident, fool! Shredder says, regaining composure and ready to slay the enemies in front of him. Perhaps he is, Shredder, Leonardo replies as he charges right at him. But perhaps not! As Leo finishes his sentence, the Shredder is just wide-eyed. He's just been impaled by Leonardo's katana. The battle's over. Shredder has just been delivered a mortal wound. Now you are beaten, Leonardo says, wiping blood from his katana. So, finish it, fools. I am helpless. Slay me now. The turtles look down at their fallen foe. We turtles are not dogs without honor, unlike you, Orokusaki. I will give you one more chance to redeem your honor. Take this katana and commit seppuku. Saki looks at the katana. Never! He pulls a grenade out of his belt. If I must kill myself, I will take all of you turtles with me! The Shredder pulls the pin. This thermite grenade will wipe this rooftop clean of all life, including you! No! Donatello screams as he throws his bow staff with all his might. It collides with Shredder, breaking his jaw and sending him plummeting over the edge, along with the grenade. The grenade explodes out of range of the turtles and finishing the Shredder off for good. Our mission is accomplished. Our master's master is avenged. I'm tired, Leonardo. Yes, so are we all, Michelangelo. Let's go home. Ugh, I ache all over. A hot bath would be nice. The turtles walk down through the alley that Shredder had fallen into, and Raphael spots something. Leonardo! Look! That piece of armor! Leonardo examines what was, moments before, the gauntlet Orokusaki had worn as the Shredder. Hmm. It seems that the Shredder has been shredded. Leonardo tosses the mangled piece of metal away, and the brothers start their journey back to their lair. We are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We strike hard and fade away into the night. So there you have it. The very first issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. From this starting point spawn cartoons, movies, a live-action TV series, toy lines, and several successive comic book series. The original story has really only ever been partially adapted into any other format. That was probably due to the brutal nature of the turtles, as they were originally presented as uh, very grimdark in, in their day. Um, the however, the charm of the characters helped turn this indie darling into a pop culture juggernaut. Did you enjoy my presentation? Do you want to see more? Tell me down in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe so I can bring you even more comics in the attic. Thank you.